The Australian Dictionary Biography is Australia's preeminent dictionary project and over 50 years it's produced well-crafted, concise, informative and we'd say fascinating articles on 13,000 Australians. And these articles were written, began to be written in the 1950s. First publication was in 1966 and at that time Australian history was just beginning. Indeed, the first meeting for the ADB was the first meeting of historians around Australia of, by and for Australian history. So the ADB in the beginning was very important for promoting Australian history and setting out the lives of Australians. And now, when we have so much on the web, you know, with Wikipedia and all these other sources, there's been much biographical work. The ADB still plays an extraordinarily important role. It, because it's well crafted, concise, and it's research edited, it's credible, and amongst this amazing avalanche of material we have these days, the ADB remains a credible source that people use in the first instance. And so the ADB has been showing Australians for 50 years, it's a gallery and it shows the various ways in which you can be Australian. It asks questions about what it is to be Australian and what Australians have achieved, both significantly and as representatives of their community. So it first started with really uh, a set of catalogue cards. So in 1954 we had a, a card catalogue which had details of Australians and from that working parties chose and selected Australians to be written up for the ADB. But to change or transform that set of cards into a national achievement of collaborative scholarship really took some doing and Keith Hancock was one of the major people behind that and it really talks to the charter of the ANU because what he did was he decided that it would be the signature piece to bring Australian historians together on a collaborative project and so it took a great deal to establish working parties in every state uh, we had our first employee, Anne Moyle, in 1959, quite literally take a journey around Australia encouraging people to join it. And so it, to bring in, we have literally had hundreds of working party members. At any one time there's 10 working parties. We've had thousands of writers. Four and a half thousand Australians have authored articles on Australians over the 50 years. So it's a massive collaborative project and took quite a bit of energy and the ANU has hosted, nurtured and assiduously cultivated this project over those years. It has brought together in concert uh, Australian historians and what's really fascinating is that we can show that some historians writing ADB articles have gone on to produce major pieces of work. So one of our um, chair people of the editorial board, Professor Jill Rowe, she did two articles for the ADB which have turned into books. Her book on uh, Stella Miles Franklin is award winning and it started with a you know, 900 word ADB article. Uh, Carolyn Chisholm and others who are on the school curriculum, they're you know, standard um, familiars. But we can actually chart the popularity, for instance, when um, Mary McKillop was sainted. The Catholics of Australia had their Christmas lunch and they went to the computer afterwards and she was the most hit upon of our articles for a couple of weeks. Um, similarly, um, you can see the engagement with popular culture. So a, a TV programme like Underbelly then results in a large number of people looking up articles on Tilly Devine or Squidgy Taylor. So these clearly people are looking at popular culture events, wondering, is that true? Is that authentic? What's more about the story? How can I find out more? And they go to the ADB articles. The ADB went online in 2006 and it now has over 60 million hits a year. And we're all the time monitoring what it is that people are interested in uh, Nine million Australians died before 1990 and we have uh, many websites, not only the ADB, but we have companion websites like Obituaries Australia 
and we now have 23,000 people on those sorts of websites. So people are able to come in and navigate. They're able to look at individuals and then they're able to do other things that you couldn't do um, with, a, with a book. So the ADB's gone on a cultural journey from a book to digital online resource. And it's not just a book online. You can do all of these amazing navigation and journeys yourself through the ADB. At any one time, we're working on 600 articles. Um, so we've just published uh, a group who, of people who died in 1992. And there are the artists, the Sydney Nolan, Nolan on Nolan. Um, there are uh, Brett Whiteley. There are a whole range of them. But on the other hand, there's the representative groups, and they often are some amongst my favourites. So Hazel Hollyman was the first air hostess in Australia, and she became a matron, but quite often when who, some of her girls were sick, she would take to the air herself. And so that's a particularly interesting article, which talks to transport history in Australia, women's occupations, and a whole range of uh, business aspects. The ADB size, and its significance and its impact means that people will look to the ADB for all kinds of new ways of using information now. I mentioned using lives and this really is what we'd be doing in the future. So people are able to do collective biography. We're able to tease out families which have been significant in Australian history and that's not been able to be done before because we have multi-generational data. We're creating big data on which new projects can be based and so we are doing family trees of uh, families showing, showing, and this really gets over the issue that the ADB is about significant people, because families always have people who are, some are prominent, some uh, I've never seen the light of day as it were. And so these family trees are showing us a gallery of Australians that we haven't had before. We're also doing network analysis and teasing out collective biographies of the important associational groups that Australians have been involved in over time. So we're able to look at trade unions, business, politicians, um, women's organisations, and in a way that hasn't been done, again, because of the size, uh, the significance, and the ability to make an impact on our, from our database.